This is Twit. Okay, Polly. Press to talk. How exciting is that, huh? Well, <laughs> like a walkie talkie. In today. isolation, not that exciting. Okay. However, yes. Uh, one thing I neglected to mention, or if I did, I only mentioned in passing, was that when Microsoft announced the new version of Copilot in Windows 11, which, you know, by my estimate is the 17th version of the app. I don't, you know, it's something like that. <laughs> uh, were you just um, counting the icons? Is it counting <laughs> yeah. And uh, the second in which they claimed it was a native app, but in this case, it is a native app. Um, I had learned something about this app that I, I don't think we discussed. And that was that moving to this new architecture, I hate to use that term, to using to the, moving to this new app design was done so that they could add more features to the app. And one of the features I knew that was coming was something called press to talk, which they are now testing in the dev channel of the Windows Insider program. Um, so yes, this is a, well, I, I think it's just a it's a way to quickly start Copilot in speech mode, where you're going to speak through a microphone and interact with it. So the conversation w- will be audio based instead of text based, right? Um, but okay, n- not super exciting to me anyway. But it's it is one of uh, also 17 apps that use Alt plus Space, including the one of my app picks today. Hilarious. Um, there's that. They don't have any. Uh, way to customize that to be your own um, keyboard shortcut. What was wrong with Windows key plus C? It was. I, want, I, want, I it thought was that there. was a Copilot key. Well, not everyone has a Copilot key, and for you uh, peasants that can't afford the bot, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Microsoft. Well, look, when they announced that Copilot key, I thought it was going to be only on certain models. It's like everywhere all of a sudden. So yeah, yeah eventually we'll all have Copilot keys. Um, but yeah, so for now we don't. And yeah, in that case, I, th- I believe you just hold it down, and that will start the the voice interaction. So okay, I mean it's fine, it's fine. But I think the more interesting thing here is that this new design uh, gives them the ability to do things like we talked about last week, including bring back those Windows actions, the Windows commands. Um, I think we talked about. I think we talked about. Um, uh, phone integration. If you have an Android phone, you can do mm-hmm. things uh, with your phone as well. But the list of other features that I got from Raphael, by the way, I should say, is a daily briefing, which was in the previous version, but is gone. This is the audio podcast, like uh, sort of Amazon Alexa like feature where it kind of talks about the day's news, you know, in a really jaunty style. <laughs> um, literally a feature called walkie talkie, um, integration with the Windows screen snipping, uh, something called Windows Vision. Uh, Windows Core Audio, Windows Wake Word, <laughs> it's like Windows Safe Word, um, nice. Windows <laughs> Windows Pro Enabled, no idea what that means, but uh, possibly there are going to be certain Copilot features that will only work in Windows Pro because this isn't confusing enough, um, and something called Windows Context, which sounds a little bit like some of those AI features that we see on Copilot Plus PCs related to uh, recall and, and, and click to do, I don't know. Um, and then there's uh, also, I should say, Windows File Upload and Windows, oh, I said Windows Context, sorry. Uh, I think, window, I'm sorry, Windows File Upload and Windows Context, I think technically are in Copilot today. They don't really reference them by name, but I think they're in there now. So there is a bunch coming. So um, we'll talk about this a little bit later in the show, but there is a uh, consumer AI event coming up and uh, this might be tied to that. You know, maybe mm-hmm. this is the launch time frame for these new features, much like the original Copilot for Windows 11 was launched at a special event in September 2023, if I'm not mistaken. Seems like a million years ago, but yeah. Do people, what do you guys, so there seems to be two ways, Mm -hmm. two two kind of primary paths to using AIs like Copilot. One is uh, to chat with them, chat bots. Yep. Yep. And the other is, you know, kind of more informational to use, use it with your data, to query it, to, do people like to? I guess they do. I get, but it just feels like. First of all, people. They think they're people now. People. Who are these people? <laughs> no, I. I think we're a little early to know for sure. I, yeah. I and it's interesting because even just within the this year, right? Um, uh, starting with Deep Seek, <laughs> I always struggle mm-hmm. with that term. Um, we have this notion of reasoning models that spell out in front of you how yeah, they are getting that. to the answer. Yeah. Well, everyone loves that. So that's something. 
uh, OpenAI specifically hid from you. Right. But now what we've learned is actually this increases trust in the AI yeah, because we can kind builder. of, yeah. yeah. So I think these things evolve. I will say that oh, I'm going to talk a little but bit. But that's of, primarily a text mode because you don't want it to do that while you're chatting. With look, it, right? my, my knee jerk reaction when I saw what they called at the time, big chat, uh, three years ago, two years ago, <laughs> whatever that was, uh, when they first announced it, uh, was, uh, I'm sorry, you're telling me we're going back to a text-based interface? Yeah. 30, uh, 40 actually years after the, the GUI kind of arrived? Uh, that didn't make any sense to me. That said, I mean, we do these short textual interactions all the time in messaging apps, in Google search, whatever. Um, it is notable that Copilot or uh, all of these AI, these chatbot things, seem to work well in a conversational context. And I, I think I'm positive I talked about this, but if I didn't, I'm going to during my tip. Um, there is, I've, I've, I've seen this with normal people, like mainstream, non-technical people. Mm -hmm. And I've now heard about this from a guy who is more technical, where they walk around and, and they, I'm going for a walk. And what they want to do is offload some ideas onto chat GPT or whatever. And they right. prompt it to say, look, just don't interrupt me. I'm just going to talk, but I want you to collect all this information. And when they get back, they're like, all right, now why don't you summarize the ideas I have? Uh, yeah, tell me which I you think that. are the most viable. Right. So people yeah. are starting to do this. Mm -hmm. That to me is fascinating. And I, I distinctly you used to do this with a little tape deck and then you handed it to your, yeah, assi you handed exactly. it to your assistant. Exa it. It's like, yeah, you're like, click idea. Uh, a vampire, but it's in medieval times. It's crazy, you know. Whatever, like so. Yeah, so there's like yeah, right. So people. That's why I wear this little uh, B computer because it's always listening, and it, and I could say, hey, remind me to, or things like that. right. I've never done this, and I'm, but I'm fascinated by it. Like I, I actually do think this is. Remember when uh, the little Bluetooth headsets first arrived? Probably right around the time. Yeah, you look people right? are crazy talking into their. You'd see a guy walking out talking to the air, and you're like, look at yeah. that insane now we're person. Used to you know, it. now yeah. we're used to it. Yeah. So now going forward, a lot of those people will be talking to AIs and we won't think anything of it. I felt they, a little guilty because I was doing this in the restaurant last night yeah. and the AI was talking back and I felt like maybe that's rude. You should say something like, uh, you know, like the guy comes over with the bill, you're like, uh, hey, uh, co-pilot, um, based on my experience tonight at this restaurant, what do you think the bill should be or the tip should be? And then it's like, oh, really? I'm like, why don't you tell them? And then, you know, <laughs> I was thinking uh, maybe I should tip Paul and Richard for an excellent show. What do you think a good tip would be for a couple of podcasts? So is a tip. Watch should, both ways when you cross the street. I nice. should mention that a good tip for a podcast can vary, but generally around 10, 20 percent of the ticket price is a nice gesture. If you felt they did an exceptional job, leaning towards the higher end would be great. Consider what you think reflects their effort and quality of the show. I have so many problems with that. Um, One is it sounds just like J.K. Simmons. <laughs> which is unbelievable. Which, by the way, I kind of like, I have to say. I love it. No, that's my choice. If I can't get Scarlett Johansson, yeah, I'll take J.K. Yeah, Simmons. Yeah, yeah, no, he's good. Yeah, what's the As Patrick I says. I want Mike Ermintraub, actually, from Better Call Saul. But, yeah. you know, I don't think he's available right now. <laughs> you, you know, how, look, you know how everyone has stories. And then some. So I, I have some stories that are things I've never actually witnessed myself. But they were so good. I just, they were in my brain. And you remember the show 30 Rock from the Sun? Uh, Who? Third Rock from the Sun. Oh, Third Sorry, Rock huh? from the Sun. Yeah, with John Lester. So aliens, yes. right? The fish out of water, right? So yeah. someone teaches him how to tip. So he goes in a restaurant. He puts down a... a, a a stack of one dollar bills and the waiter comes over he says this is your tip every time you screw up i'm going to take away a dollar oh that's smart. now i've never seen this show i've never seen that episode anyway and i think that's one of the most hilarious things i've ever heard in my it's life brilliant. so i think yeah i just think like ai could be used like that like uh <laughs> ai like uh pay attention to this experience and uh, <laughs> you know let me know what do you think by I the way do? you're getting 10 percent tips <laughs> yeah yeah we underperformed i get it it's okay <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All he did was put tea in water. <laughs> Why? What? what? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> which is pretty much what a podcast. But, but is. I, I, it, to be more serious, I think you're exactly right that what these are becoming, and this is the chat interfaces companions that yes. you interact with and get advice from. Literal companions. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they tried to. Uh, we're gonna. You know. Of course, we're gonna have an AI section later. But they, 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 Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft tried with these digital assistants, these per, uh, digital personal assistants to achieve this type of interaction, right? right. Um, in the beginning, you would say some word, you'd ask it a question, it would come back. And that was the whole thing. And then eventually they got, 
kind of conversational where it could remember the context and keep going. So you could ask it follow-up questions, but it was never super sophisticated. Um, and now it, it is, you know, now it's really good. It's yeah, good enough that people are talking to close it. close to her, yeah. you know? Like, yes, yes. That's what I really want. I, uh, but in, so in a way, I'm preparing for that day because they, they're not that useful. But the fact that well, I'm recording every interaction I have, I, everything that's going yeah. on, my emails, my calendar stuff, I'm hoping, you know, this may be five, ten years down the road, but that this database that I'm building will be of value, right? <clears throat> you're going to be in a supermarket – and you're going to walk, you're going to be done. And you're going to walk to the aisle where you pay. And it's going to say, hey, you forgot the, you forgot the butter or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It will know, right? It's going to become proactive. That's what you want, right? Yes. Or is this it what is, you want? This is, well, I think it, I, no, but I think it is. I think it is. I think it is. Right? Yeah. Um, it just depends on the person. And it, and it depends on how annoying and right. uh, intrusive it is, right? Is um, that more or less useful than the typed AI interactions that you have? I don't think it, people can type. <laughs> so right. the, the only thing that saves it is most people who are typing to AI are doing it on a phone and it's pretty good autocorrect, you know, depending on the phone. And right. that might save it a little bit. Um, and I, I watched my kids. My kids are like, they they draw straight lines and words. Appear. I don't even know how they do it. And uh, you know, it's kind of astonishing. So I guess if you're younger than I am, maybe it's even better. I don't know. But yeah, I, I my initial reaction to typing was, I mean, I'm a writer and I was like, what is this? No one's going to type, right? you know, complicated things to an AI, but actually, <laughs> so what, what do I know? I know people are doing it, I guess. Oh, I use it all the time. Yep. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, fa I'm fascinated by this. I understand it's not yet Completer. No, but you see those moments where you're like, okay. Once in a while, it's like, and you can tell, you know, yeah, it's yeah. getting there. And it's happening so fast. Whatever complaint you have today might be out of date. That's you know, two weeks I, from, I, now, from Ray Kurzweil's uh, book, which uh, <clears throat> you know, again, we're going to interview him. Even experts in the field have been surprised by many of the recent breakthroughs right. in AI. That's right. They seem to occur suddenly without much warning. Like we didn't even, you know, what? Right. right? I know. Which, by the way, feels like, I know, Richard, I know. <laughs> I just got to qualify this by saying, I know. But it feels like intelligence. It feels like mm, developing yes. intelligence. It feels like. Well, he also points out there's an interesting thing that before the AI can do it, you say, oh, yeah, that's very human. No AI is going to do it. He, he talks about an expert uh, named Poggio, to Tommaso Poggio, yeah. MIT expert in AI in 2014, said, you know, the ability to describe the content of an image would be one of the most intellectually challenging things of all for a machine to oh, do. And now it's, it's not going to happen. The, almost the next day. Yeah, right. Google uh, the, the, showed on lens. the on device offline version of that yeah. updates on my laptop every three yeah. days. But I his mean, point is, and then what happens when humans do is, oh, well, that wasn't that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Right. That we go. We're going to be oh. doing this until we are all in caves with f barely fire. And mm -hmm. we're going to be like, I just still don't think it's that smart. Right. Of course. And they're flying the over us in spaceships like it's, you know, yeah, of course it'd be the, the best matrix champions something. of chess and go in the world. Of course it did. That's just a it's just a calculation. You yeah. know, yeah. of course it can uh, make images, you know, but that but is sure. it human? Of course it can do my job. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's where it's going. My job's ludicrus. I mean, that doesn't what does that mean? That's, uh, that's where yep. it's going. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. It's just it's very, very interesting. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.